Hello there, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Basics, we're going to take a look at controls now. And that's a whole section in Zim. And we'll start with the motion controller and see how far we get. Maybe it'll just be the motion controller today. I'll go to the docs here. Well, this is zimjs.com. And then I'm pressing docs. And controls is right here. So I will scroll down to it, though. Here's stuff on ZimFrame. Here's the display objects. These are objects that uh, you can then add to the stage, including a bunch of components. Here are the methods that belong to each of those, uh, oh, each of those display objects have these methods that were added by Zim. And then underneath that is the controls. And there's a bunch of different controls. These ones are to get from page to page, uh, to show responsive adaptive designs. There's some tiles and wrappers and beads. But basically what controls are is when you are operating on a display object that already exists. So it's not a display object itself, but it's a tile of a bunch of display objects. And probably the most basic control would be down here in the controllers is this motion controller. That helps us control the motion of an object. And so that's the one I want to start with. Physics is a type of control as well. Maybe we'll get to see how to operate physics in Zim. That would probably be a good idea. And then there's a bunch of effects as well that are all under controls. Uh, there's some that we use a lot, like emitter and pen. Uh, there's also synth and, and sound wave. Uh, and then various uh, parallax and, and, and color effects as well. So we'll be doing basics on a bunch of these uh, as we go. And right now we're starting on the motion controller, which is right, uh, where is it? There it is. So I'll expand that open. There is an example of a motion controller, and I'm going to press that. But it's a little bit complex because the example is itself because it's got mouse down, mouse move, key down, game button, game stick, and swipe. Uh, and all of that is in the code, so that means it, it looks more complicated than it maybe needs to be for a very first look into the code of a motion controller. But the idea is that butterfly is following our, our mouse movement. And we can do it on mouse down, so now it's not following, but if I press the mouse down, there it goes to that point. It's not following my mouse over here until I mouse down there, and then it follows to that mouse down point. So that would also work on, well, actually, mouse move as well works on mobile. There's even a couple more types of controls now. This was the this was sort of the mini site back at the beginning when we launched the motion controller. There's key down, so now I'm using my keys to, to make the butterfly move like that. So that could be handy. There's also a game stick, for instance. And let's see, do I have a game stick back here? I do, let's see if it works. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now I'm using a controller, a game controller. So don't forget that. It's not very often that you see game controllers being used in on the canvas, uh, but we have tied into the API in JavaScript and made that a lot easier here in the motion controller. And that can be very powerful to let people play games with, um, with their uh, game pads. Okay. And then there's a swiping one where you just continue to swipe. If I, if I swipe to the right and I swipe more and I swipe more, so uh, that would be maybe good on mobile. I'm now using a touch screen finger and you're swiping the, the object around for the motion controller. All right, let's go take a look at some code then, shall we? F11 out of this. And maybe I'll just close all that stuff down. Here is some code that we're starting. Oh, I should have shown you the template, of course. Well, we can open this up in a browser. And on the Zim site, zimjazz.com, if you want the template, you go to the code section here and press copy. And that will copy the template that we're, that we're now working in. So once again, that's the code section on, on Zim right here and press copy. That's basically what I've gotten here. So we will want an object that we're going to control. We will say a new circle or const circle is equal to a new circle. And we'll dot center that on the stage like so. 
Let's have a look. I'm going to open this up in Browser Plus. I'm in Atom right now, and Browser Plus allows me to show it right here in the same kind of screen. So there it is. There's our circle, and we want to then control that with a motion controller. So that's a new motion controller. And in round brackets, we say the circle, please. There we go. And uh, now when we click, so the default is a mouse down. The circle heads towards where we press. Nice, huh? If we want a different type, the type is the next parameter. And there is, for instance, a mouse move, like that. And we refresh. And now the circle is following wherever our mouse moves. It's also another one called, I can't remember if it's called press move. Let's go take a look at the options on that. Like I said, we've added a couple of them and they start to <laughs> they start to blur in my mind as to the names of them. But we did find that we might want to press down and have it follow. And when we press up, it doesn't follow. Right now I'm pressing up and it's still following. It's like, no, I want to press down and move and have it follow. I can't remember if that was called press move. Let's see if that one works. That's what the event is called, I think. Yeah. Okay. Which is almost like a drag, but not really. Uh, I don't know if that's it for you. Yeah, I guess while I'm pressing, it's going to go to my my uh, where my finger lets up. So it actually doesn't stop when I mouse up. It stops where the mouse was the last time I press down. There might be another one that stops moving when you mouse up. Um, although that would really probably be a drag, I suppose. <laughs> it would just be dragging the circle. <laughs> it moves along until you mouse up. But uh, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a few different types for different situations that we've, we've come along. Alrighty. Well, that's really cool. Isn't that easy? Now, there is one trick that happens with the motion controller. Say we had a background picture. So a new rectangle. And we will make it uh, 500 and by 400 and red dot center on the page. So there we go. And let's go back to um, just the uh, mouse move. Now let's see what happens. Oh, uh, it does. Maybe it's a press move that we need to go to. Let's try try that. Yes, yeah, so a mouse move is fine. Let's try the mouse down. So this is the default mouse down. We wouldn't even have to put anything in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the mouse down worked outside here. So I can mouse down on the stage and it goes there. But if I mouse down on this part, it doesn't go there. The reason for it is this uh, new button dot pose. I don't know, something like uh, 50 comma 50 from the right and the bottom. OK, so if we had a button here, it's quite often that you've got interface and you're also doing, um, you know, some mouse movement playing around and maybe this goes to the next page. It's really annoying if you press the button. I just press the button and then this thing starts heading towards the button. So what we do is by default, if there's something on the stage, we assume it's going to not be pressable like the button. So um, and you have to turn it on positively. Because that, that was, that was a, be a beginner mistake that would just happen over and over and over again, where we would see mouse movement when we're trying to activate interface. Like I'm trying to change the volume here and all of a sudden my character heads towards the volume button. That's just so annoying that what we decided to do would be automatically it doesn't go there. But if it's a background picture or something, maybe we still want it to go there. So we have to use this thing called mouse down includes, which is a parameter of the motion controller. So you would put that in a variable, const backing or something like that is equal to. And then in the, in the motion controller, you have to include that in the mouse down includes. Probably the easiest way to get there is to use the Zim Duo technique. So we're going to set it up so the target is the circle. I think it's target, it might be object. 
uh, as a parameter name. Me, you know, it, it was interesting. We've got a couple times, a couple times we use target. Most of the times we use OBJ if we're specifying something. Um, anyway, I believe motion controller is the target. It might be best in Zim perhaps if we just choose one name for that everywhere and always. I don't know if there's really a difference between the OBJ and the target, for instance. Anyway, um, mouse down is the type, I believe. And that was another thing that we ran into. It, uh, in, in, in controls, we use type. But if we have to say type in other, in, in the components, we often use something like, uh, oh, I can't remember an example of it, but um, slider type or something like that, or button type, or we put a word in front of it because it's a property that we want to change afterwards. And we don't want to get it mixed up with the type property because all the Zim control, all the Zim uh, display objects have a type property that says what type it is. It's a circle. So if we ask for the circle, what it says type, it does. Um, and yet sometimes certain things have types of stuff. <laughs> you know, like, uh, uh, but anyway, th this is a type of mouse down. I believe we use the word type rather than uh, this. This would be too long. Motion controller type uh, would have been like a pretty long parameter for that. So I, I believe for the controls, we anytime we have a type on controls, we just leave it type still. Alrighty, so target is circle, type is uh, mouse down, and now we can go directly to the motion, oh no, the, what was it called again? The mouse down includes, speaking of long ones, mouse, mouse down, all one lo word lowercase, mouse down includes. So that's an array, or if there's only one of them, we can put it on there. I'll start an array, and we will say the backing. So that means we're going to include the backing when we mouse down. So we save that, and we refresh here. And now we can mouse down on the backing as well and have it operate. But we still can press the button without it going to the button. Isn't that neat? See, we had, we'd have no way of knowing which one is which. So we can either, by, by default, we can either turn them all on so they accept the mouse or turn them all off so they don't accept the mouse. And we decided to turn off everything except for the stage, uh, won't accept the mouse unless we decide which ones to specifically say that's okay. So if we did say, here's what it would look like uh, with the button. What do we, do we call the button something? Where is the button? Const button is equal to, and we'll have to move this up. So there's the button now, and if we say backing and button, then you'll see what it would look like if we just turned everything on. I'm going to press this thing, and it's like, oh, hey, wait, no, I don't want that thing to go towards my button. <laughs> see what I mean? So that's a tricky bit about the motion controller. Otherwise, the motion controller, as, as you saw, is very, very simple. There are other things that relate to keyboard movements. For instance, if you want, uh, well, let's go look at the docs. If you want to move only along certain directions with the keyboard. Also, there's flipping. So flipping doesn't, it doesn't work very well here with a, or, uh, with a circle. Maybe we can say a new triangle. Triangle, that would be a capital T here. Now see what happens with a triangle. This can get a little bit tricky, The uh, and then we would want triangle here. I don't really want the mouse down includes. Well, okay, if I've got a backing, I do, but I don't want the button. So there we go. So right now, the triangle just stays. It doesn't rotate to try and follow the movement. And we can make it do that. Let's have a look at the parameters here. So I'm going out to the docs and typing motion like that and it pops open the motion controller so speed axis map diagonal can it move diagonally damp flip orient so there's orient and let's see what happens when we go orient true orient colon true comma now, as we move here, it, it, it looks a little bit odd, doesn't it? Because the, tri the triangle wasn't pointing to the right. So 
oops, uh, by default, what we do is we assume that uh, it's oriented towards the right because, you know, like if something's sort of facing the right, it, it tends to be moving along the ground or what have you. And so that's just the default orientation. So in other words, our triangle, we would want to dot rote that uh, 90 degrees. And let's have a look. So now it is pointing that way. And now the you can see that um, and now it's not following. Let, let's turn it on to follow. Mouse, uh, what was that? Follow. I don't remember if that was. No, uh, what was it? Uh, mouse move. Mouse move. Like that. Okay, so now there it is. It's following the mouse, and you can see that it's moving. There's also flip, which means you see how that turn, it actually turns around like that and goes back? Well, uh, you can also try out flip. Flip is tricky as well. Flip colon. I don't know if it's true or if it's horizontal vertical. We'll have a look. So that that's still not really flipping, like going uh, immediately back. So let's try horizontal there. Horizontal. We have a... Uh, this may work or may not. Uh, it didn't seem to. Okay, let's have a look at flip in the docs. Flip. It may be only keyboard. Flip, default null, set to horizontal or vertical, or both. These, by the way, maybe I should uh, go through the docs and change that. That can be an, up, uh, an uppercase constant at the moment. To flip the target in the negative direction, flip will not work if the target starts rotated. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that just became, became this whole schmozzle in behind. That's why I knew this stuff was complicated. So basically, you would have to make it in a container and rotate the object in the container, but the container is not um, is not rotated. All right, so shall show you that it's not that bad, but it is of course tricky. Const holder, for instance, holder is equal to a new container, and then we'll just leave that for now. We'll make a triangle, and we'll rotate it, and we will add it to the container. Add to the holder, and then we will say holder dot center. So we have not flipped the, or we have not rotated the holder, the container itself, but the triangle is rotated inside the the holder, and then our target for the motion controller is now the holder. Now let's have a look. There. Okay, so you see how, it, like it'll rotate a little bit like that, but then if you go too far, it, it just it just kind of flips. Whoop, whoop, which looks better if you're using keys, to tell you the truth. Flip is usually used with keys. But orient looks pretty nice. Flip is just a little bit awkward because it doesn't know when it's gonna curve and when exactly it's going to flip. But with keys, it, it makes it a little bit easier. Let's try keys here, so that would be uh, key down. How you doing out there? Is this fun? Okay, so there's key down. Uh, that might not be right. Um, key press? Key, uh, I can't remember. Key press, maybe? Key press. Let's try that. Oh, it, no, it's not recognizing it, so it's working on the, uh, the the mouse down. Let's have a look at the docs then. Surely I should have been able to remember the key. It is key down. Okay, let's try that again then. Key down, isn't that what I had? And it's not moving. Oh, I maybe have to press on it. Okay, yeah. S whoa. Yeah, I have to... Pr That's odd. So there seems to be a glitch once it stops moving. It, it's going going crazy, Oop. where it doesn't know if it should flip or not. Interesting. Okay, we'll have to check that bug. The plug. So here's what we do with with bugs. I don't see it. We'll do a little bit of a desktop reveal here on Slack. Come on into Slack, zimjs.com slash Slack if you want. And under bugs here, if we can find it, bugs, we'll report that right now. And it is a motion controller. And what were we doing? Key down. 
quote the key down. Well, I don't really need quotes on there. And flip and what was the other one? Orient. Orient <laughs> is glitching when, I don't know, going left or something like that. All right, and we'll take a look at that. I'll send that off. What happens if we don't have orient? And by the way, the key down wasn't working for me because I hadn't pressed on the on the the app. Okay, you can't use key down. It doesn't let you capture key presses until you click on the app. So usually with a game, we have an intro page that you would have to press go with. And once you press go on the intro page, then you're able to use keys right away. Okay, so that's that's fine. And and the flip is working. Yeah, the flip is working and that's fine. It's just, uh, it looks like it was in combination with Orient. True, it was uh, messing up. What is What does it work like with Orient but not a flip? Here's that. Yeah, that's good. Looks a, a little strange, but it's not bad. Okay, and you can choose not to go diagonal if you want. Uh, by the way, key pressing is quite tricky uh, to do properly, and we've done it properly. We know because we've been building these things for years. Uh, as in, if I'm pressing one key and then I press to the right and then I let go, I want it to continue going on the one key. And unless you code it properly, that doesn't happen. As soon as you let go of the second key, it would just stop moving, even though I'm still pressing down on a key. So there's all these little tricks to, to key movements. We also have a first person uh, version as well, where you use the forward arrow or the WASD, you use the forward. And then if you press the side arrows, it kind of curves that way, but it's always forward moving. And that's called first person. So I believe, uh, I can't remember exactly what the parameter is called. Let's go have a look at the docs. <laughs> Hey, so uh, this is the basics. You've already seen the basics a long time ago. You saw the basics of a motion controller. It's so easy, and that was great. Uh, all these other things in here are sort of like beyond basics, I guess we could put it. Um, one thing you want to look at, too, is the speed that it's going. So you can adjust how quickly something goes through it. You may have noticed that when it was following the mouse, it wasn't exactly on the mouse. That's a combination of damping and speed, and you can adjust the damp. Damp is how it kind of slows down and speeds up, and also the speed uh, on any of these. I'm just, we're just at default at the moment. There's the axis, so you can make it only go horizontal or only vertical. Uh, you can make it go within boundaries. Mapping is for the, um, the joystick or the gamepad. Uh, flip orient constant first person so there's first person and there's also being able to adjust the turn speed and various thresholds on the joysticks again sorry i'm so old school and the joysticks on the gamepad that is uh, mouse move outside is kind of interesting as well i can't remember what our default is but if it's following the mouse this is off the canvas right here so the the gray area the light gray is the canvas if I'm out here, do I want it to follow it? And that would be back in the, the mouse move or whatever it's called. Okay, and so you can turn that on to yes, please, please do that. Please follow it even if I'm outside of the stage. What was I looking at? Oh, first person, colon true, I would imagine, colon true. And now it's a different keyboard. This isn't as fun for you, I guess. So press on the thing. Yeah, so there I'm going up, there I'm turning. So the up arrow is going forward. And then uh, I'm not sure, it looks like up is forward. So I'm gonna refresh this again. Up, oh, click on it. Up is forward, whereas right is turning, left is turning, down is backwards. So now I'm not sure, maybe we just want the triangle facing up rather than to the right. That's interesting. So how about we just rotate that zero for now and see if it's uh, working better for me. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so now that, uh, imagine a little spaceship there. I'm using the arrow, and this is first person. 
and that's often easier to drive. You just hold down the, the forward arrow or the W and off you go. And then you can turn with the other ones. And if I want, I can go in reverse. Beep, beep, beep. So I'm driving, reverse. Okay, so uh, there you go. There's a, a bunch of things for the motion controller. Uh, there's some really neat stuff that we were doing with the motion controller uh, and with sprites. So I think I showed you sprites, a basic on sprites already. And motion controllers can also be used for like uh, side scroller type games a little bit, you know, and jumping things. I think we use the motion controller for that as well. And we have some examples of that. They might be in here. So yeah, there's a side scroller one. So this is also using the motion controller, but um, what the motion controller is doing is controlling the whole scene, basically. It's controlling the animation speed of the sprite. It's controlling the scrollers that are going by. So all of that is, is in what's called an accelerator, and the motion controller is controlling the accelerator. <laughs> Neat, huh? With the keys. So we're using keyboard motion controller there, and there's a link there. Um, motion can controller can also control pens. So here's an example of a pen. And we'll see a pen in a future one. Uh, yeah, but I don't know, it's not. Okay, well, oh, no, oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, so this drawing, so that animation that was coming in was, that was animating along a path. Let's refresh it again, I'll see what's going on. So there we are animating a pen and different types of pens along a path. Neat, huh? And in this example, we've got the different types of pens. And then this is a motion controller that is using a press move, I think, to, uh, to control that. Ooh. Here's barbed wire. And here's hair. Nice, nice hair, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, what, I, what I see here, though, is I, I can't in, in this arrangement, I don't seem to be able to pick that up and drag it to somewhere else. So the, the motion con or the, the motion controller is just permanently on here. I don't even know if I have a delete. We have a clear. There it erased itself in colors. Anyway, that, that was that example. We did do advanced work in, in Gen Pen, and there's probably a, a simple way to do this. But in Gen Pen, there I am drawing, and yet I can also pick up the piece that I'm drawing. It may be that the first motion controller was like version one of the pen before we could uh, pick up the pieces of the pen. All right, so this is Gen Pen. It's a whole thing with layers that, uh, that you can, can do and add. It's got the various presets here. So here's what a city looks like. And again, those could go in different layers, but also customizing pens, which make it, you know, wow, just fantastic. We can make really cool things there. And then a bunch of things along the top, including uh, making a path like this and then having the pen follow the path. So if we do that and hit follow, boop, look at that. The pen follows the path that we make. And if we, if we change the path and hit follow, boom, choop. There we go. And, and one thing you'll note is when it followed the path that time, you see how it's kind of stretched and jaggedy? That's because the time was short. So if we make a longer path, we may want to increase the time. This one's called a stepper. And note that with the stepper, the farther away I go, the faster that goes up. Or indeed, I could just type a number in. Isn't that neat? So we're going to do it in seven. And there's also the type of ease. The, do, we, do we want? OK, so I choose that. And then, uh, well, let's see the path. There's the path. Why don't we clear this whole thing first? Clear. So there's the path, and we hit follow. Now it takes longer to go along that. Whee! And you can see that that's type, tighter. Cool, huh? So that's GenPen, quite the complex application. It, it would be hard for you to go into the code of that and find out where the motion controller stuff is. This is just so buried in hundreds of things, but uh, quite fascinating. Nice complex example, as it says there. All righty, yay, motion controller. Yay, Zim. So uh, come on in, zimjs.com. 
and pop on down to the slate or or is that slack slack i mean slack or i've been doing a lot of work with zim kids here you want to take a peek at kids kids is really coming along this is slate right here <laughs> why I, I got uh mixed up but in slate we now have a series of various assets that you can include and 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 then start playing those uh in here as as we've done there there's we got sound going and dragon so we're teaching kids how to do this. We've added a big help section on how to add all that kind of stuff there. If you're new to Zim, you may want to come in and take a look at these tutorials as well. Even though they're set up for kids, they're pretty amazing tutorials. Uh, we're doing some dynamic drawing. And the, what you're doing is you're looking at the code here and saying, okay, that's how you use an interval to make what we just saw there. And, and then you would code it over here to try and do that. It looks like we have done that and then you hit test. So there's all sorts of different levels or samples that we can do. And this even gets into some controls. Controls are down here. Uh, there's physics, so there's some physics things in here. Can you imagine that? Teaching kids how to, how to do this stuff. Level two is um, we're, we, we've got follow in there where it follows and we scored, yay! Wow, this one's quite quite an interesting game. You see this ring here? If you press in the ring at the top, it goes down. I'm trying to hit that box. <laughs> oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> it's a bit, here we go. Yeah, when we hit a box, another bug comes out. Isn't that cool? And this one, you, we can just sort of like uh, get the bugs to go everywhere. Oh, no, another bug. So it's almost like a little game where you then try and herd the bugs to get them to go back in the box, which isn't terribly easy before you end up hitting the box yourself again. But once again, we're teaching kids how to do this stuff. Isn't that amazing? There's all the spells, or what we call spells, so we're treating it like magic. Anyway, whatever. That's uh, Zim Kids. So if you know any teachers, or want to teach yourself, or even learn yourself, uh, come on in to uh, Zim Kids, and you know you can check out all this stuff. Fun for the kids. All right, we'll end her there. And look forward to an X Basics. Maybe we'll take a look at what have we got? We got some parallax. We've got the pen. Perhaps we, we just talked about the pen. Maybe we could look more at the pen, how to set that up and make that work in the next Zim Basics. Ciao.